Call of Duty is about to get Season 5 on August 12th, and this is, I think, easily its most significant content patch that it's actually had so far. And if you're a Cold War player or you like zombies, then I think you'd be very happy with this. But if, like me, you play Warzone more often, then honestly, I'm not sure they focused it in the right places. There's no change to the Verdance map, and there's no anti-cheat, which are easily the two most important problems facing Warzone at the moment. So while they've actually done a lot of work and added a lot of stuff, I'm just not sure they're focusing their resources in the right places. But let's have a look. Now, the new mode which interests me the most is actually a Cold War mode, and it's the double agent mode, which they've recently released a trailer for. And a lot of people are calling this Among Us, but for me, I think it's a lot closer to the old Gary's mod, Trouble in Terrorist Town, which was also in the Counter-Strike universe, which came from Half-Life mod, obviously. And so this has quite a long history. And I think this mode actually fits a lot better with COD than the Among Us style would. You see, everyone starts with a pistol, and so unlike Among Us, you can actually defend yourself against the double agents in this. Uh, and there's an investigator who, along with the double agents, they both have different abilities and abilities to investigate people. Like if there's a corpse on the floor, the investigator can go up to it and look for clues and they'll see footsteps leading away from it. And so then they can uh, talk to the operatives in the game and try and track where they are. Now, the operatives aren't defenseless. There are even guns littered around the map as well as their pistols. And so if they suspect someone's a double agent, they can just shoot them. They don't have to wait for any uh, talking mode or have a vote on it or anything. Of course, if you haven't actually told everyone that you're suspicious of this person, then now you've just randomly killed someone and uh, you'll probably be next because now you look very suspicious. So there's a lot of hidden depth to this just like Among Us. And I think if you can get the friends for it, there's up to 10 players in this, then I think uh, you can have a lot of fun in this one. Moving on to Warzone, I'll start with two new perks. The first is Combat Scout, where if you hit an enemy, they'll glow orange and be automatically pinged for you. This could be very powerful it certainly helps your teammates track people down and all around focus on enemies rather than uh, the rather vague ping system we actually have at the moment. So I could see this being really quite powerful, but the next is Tempered, which although it increases your armor per plate by 50%, it also limits you to two plates. So you don't get any more health, it just speeds up plating fractionally. And with armor satchels and everything else, plates normally aren't that big of an issue. And so I don't really see this being used, especially as it replaced Overkill and Ghost, which are the, at the moment they're probably the most two important things that everybody gets from their loadouts in Warzone. So I think this Tempered skill will just appear in Warzone and then never be used by anyone ever again. <laughs> We'll be getting new points of interest. Uh, now, this just seems to be a lootable area and a mobile transmitting station. Uh, but like in the actual trailer, it actually hints that this will somehow affect your character. It says, uh, when you go close to them for the uh, extra loot, be sure to keep your head and tune out the broadcast each one emits. In the trailer, it actually had this turning friend on foe when you'd shoot them. So I'm not sure how they'd put that into the game, whether it'd possibly turn on team kill and remove identifiers i don't know there's lots of ways they could work this in and get this as a gameplay feature but overall we'll have to wait and see how they do that we're also getting a new gulag called rush now the latest gulag has been completely awful i think it's easily the worst gulag we've had and so just changing it you sort of want to say it can't get worse although seeing how it's got worse whenever i've said that before i'm not holding out much hope we'll have to wait and see they're also adding in clash which is like team deathmatch essentially you start with your loadout it's 50 v 50 uh probably presumably on random parts of verdansk and you'll have the ability to buy in various different things and you can use vehicles and the rest i like these simply because it adds a bit of variety to leveling weapons but overall these modes themselves have been very hit and miss in quality and uh i don't really hold out much hope for this to be incredibly entertaining but i do like the fact that if you don't have the multiplayer modes or you just don't want to play cold war to level up a certain gun you can do that here so uh, I, th I find it useful although it's not really a sort of a main stay of the game for me. Also, the red doors are changing. Rather than going to a specific location, now it implies that they'll be sort of randomly teleported, uh, possibly to do with the transmitting stations. Uh, I don't know how they'll do this. I quite like the idea that they'll just drop you on the transmitting stations. So if someone's looting them, you can just appear on them and just have a hell of a time, especially if they remove any kind of team identifiers and people just start uh, teleporting on top of you. That could get very messy. And I kind of like Chaos in my FPS. So uh, depending how they've designed to develop that, 
that could be an interesting idea for sure. They're going to get three new operators and four new weapons. Two of them in the battle pass, as always. You'll have the EM2 assault rifle at level 15, and then we're going to have the Tech 9s at level 31. On top of that, you get the Kane melee weapon, which will also be coming in at launch, and the Marshall will be coming later in the season. I'd just call this a sawn off shotgun, but they're calling it a break action pistol, but it fires 12 gauge shotgun shells. Don't ask me why, I have no idea. There'll also be the usual prestige weapons, but apart from that, we get to move into the multiplayer content and zombies. This kicks off with a rather impressive five new maps, four of which will be available at launch, most of which are 6v6. However, there's also a 2v2 and 3v3 hybrid map, and then two of them will come later in the season. Demolition will also be making a return this season, and for zombies, you'll get new perk, field upgrade, support weapons, and a lot more. Now, I'm not that big of a Zombies player, but if you are, I think you've got quite a lot of stuff coming for you, including a new region. You actually get a tank in this one, which I think for Outbreak sounds awesome. Just, I kind of want to run over Zombies, even though I don't play the mode, as long as it doesn't destroy my vehicle like all of the rest of them do. I think that'd be a lot of fun. And you get a grapple gun. I've wanted a grapple gun in Warzone basically since launch. When they said they were adding zip lines, that's what I thought was going to get. So for adding it for Outbreak, I'm now just pleased add it to Warzone as well. I think Warzone needs desperately something to spice up the content and movement abilities would be awesome for that. And on top of that, they're also adding in a new map for Onslaught and a flamethrower kill streak. Now, a flamethrower can be really interesting or incredibly awful. Just depends on the power of it and the sort of visual clutter that you get. If you can't see the person, you're probably dead. If it kills you really fast, you're probably dead. But if it doesn't do either of those things, then no one will ever use it for the rest of time. So this really depends on their balancing idea of it. Um, but flamethrowers are fun. They always have been. And so I'm quite happy with it overall. Now, this is clearly a huge huge update with like five new maps is impressive on its own and they've got lots of studios working on updates for this but i have to ask are you really putting this in the right places with no new map update for verdansk uh, with no anti-cheat coming for warzone and no significant gameplay changes to warzone so far ever really what are you doing twitch has lost 50 percent of its viewers over the last three months now admittedly a lot of this is just because the streamer is not playing it because there's no anti-cheat so they don't necessarily need the new content update to go, but that is a feature that you've got to add, and I have to question why it's not here now. I have to question why things like grappling guns aren't in Warzone. Why aren't you spicing up the game mode a lot more? This is one of your most significant modes, which gets you most of the intention. It certainly gets you most of the views on Twitch. The Call of Duty in Warzone especially has been a cash cow for Activision, and yet so far, oh, they just seem to be doing things on all this sort of superfluous content. And while yes, normally I'd be very happy with all this without an anti-cheat, without focusing on your key features, it really just seems like you're adding sort of fluff around it without actually getting to the core of an issue. I'm not sure who's organizing the teams and telling them what to work on, but you really don't seem to have the population's priorities in mind. And so... I well, I feel quite bad going, look, this is the most significant content update we've had, and it's still not enough. It's not because of the amount that you've added, it's just where the resources have been targeted. With multiple FPSs like Halo and Battlefield coming out in the near future, although you're adding more content than ever before, I'm still not sure whether you can compete with them. Because the frustrations, the reasons why people are fed up with the game, aren't really being faced. They're not even being talked about in your blog post. It doesn't mention anti-cheat, doesn't mention hackers at all. And I know it's because we're like, oh, we want to focus on the content, but really, that's not what anyone cares about at the moment. So while, yes, this seems like a great update if you're focused, if you really want new Cold War content, I'm just not sure whether personally it's going to make much of a difference for me. But for now, that's it from me. If you like the video, press like, subscribe, more content in the future, and let me know your opinions of Call of Duty, Warzone, and this update down below. Is it enough, or are the features that you would have preferred they focused on instead? Let me know. For now, that's it from me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.